Welcome folks. Uh, today's video is going to be about spark plug heat ranges or the heat range of a spark plug and uh, you may have may have or may have not heard about what a what the heat range of a spark plug is so with the help of my little drawing here and uh, a few of my words possibly I can uh, help you out in understanding it a bit better. So what you see before you here is, is a mock-up drawing what, whatever you want to call it of an internal combustion engine, a gasoline one. Uh, this would be the engine block as per these uh, notations here on the, from there down. From there up is a cylinder head where the spark plug threads in. I didn't bother drawing the intake and exhaust valve in here for simplicity and uh, ease of explaining this. So if you, if you know anything about valves that's why they're missing is because I kept them out of it on purpose. Okay so what you see before you is, is a part of a spark plug and a full brand new spark plug. And what I've done is I found this in, in my uh, treasures, if you will, a box full of old spark plugs, and the top was broken off of this one. So I'm just leaving this here beside it to show you what a full spark plug looks like in case you don't know much about them. And what I've done is I've, I've cut away, took about a third or, yeah, about a third or almost uh, not quite a half of the section with a hacksaw to open up the inside porcelain and the firing tip to show you what's going on and that is um, directly um, related to the heat range design of these spark plugs no matter what manufacturer you're talking about. Okay so now that you see the what I've got here with this being broken off that's the reason I have it here so you can visualize that the rest of the plug is still here without the cutout section of steel here. Okay so I'm going to remove this and get on with the explanation. Okay now we can even go in a little closer. In comes the old zoom. Oops, wrong way again. Here we go. And let's see, I better not go in too far, just in case it crops the top. Right about there. Okay. So what what's happening here, for, for those of you that don't know what an internal combustion is, basically there's intake valves and exhaust valves, and it, it'll bring an air-fuel mixture in here uh, into the combustion chamber. Normally the piston's down at, uh, at the lowest point, when the crankshaft is turning, piston comes up, it compresses that fuel air mixture there. Then the spark is timed so that when this is pretty close to the top, um, then, then the spark plug will fire, igniting this mixture, air fuel mixture in here with gasoline and air, air mixed together. Then you get an explosion, that's why it's called the combustion chamber. So that, that forces the piston down and turns the crankshaft, gives you the power to power your car. Now with that said, we got to get back into this heat range business here. So what happens when all this fuel and air is burning, it's burning really hot, uh, well over a thousand degrees I would assume. So what happens is uh, the whole engine is, is pretty warm anyway once it's up to operating temperature. And this spark plug, it really has to, it's really in a, no, desert doesn't even begin to describe the, uh, the abuse that these spark plugs take when these engines are firing that fuel air mixture. Now, the, the spark plug has to retain a certain amount of heat in order to burn off deposits, like when you're idling or just, you know, lugging the engine really slow. And then high speed running, it increases the temperature. But the, the spark plug designers of all the different manufacturers have had to come up with a way to get a spark plug to fire um, hot enough to burn off any of the deposits put on here so it wouldn't uh, mask the spark. And also, it had to be able to run cool enough in order for the thing not to overheat and cause what they call pre-ignition. Now, if this starts to glow or gets excessively hot, what will happen is just, just the additional heat will cause pre-ignition if the plug is way too hot. Or any, any carbon deposits, for that matter, in the combustion chamber can ignite the fuel-air mixture before the piston makes its way to the top. Now, if that explosion happens as a piston's coming up, we're talking major engine damage here. So the spark has to be timed and the combustion has to take place uh, usually right after the piston hits the top dead center and it's, and it's coming back down. You don't want it to explode in this combustion chamber as the piston's rising. Like I say, major engine damage. That's where you hear um, the term pinging, if an engine's pinging. Listen for that or knocking and I think they might even call it pinking with a K in the United Kingdom. And areas thereabouts. So back, uh, getting too carried away here, let's get back into the heat range and, and how they control that. 
Okay, so what you see here is I've cut the the metal shell out of the way uh, out of the way so you could see the porcelain inside the spark plug. Now there's the firing tip. Inside there is the electrode, and then the outer electrode. The way I've cut this, I had to hold the device so you can't see the this, the electrode sticking from the side, but it's there. And um, basically, the heat has to find a way from the combustion chamber and with the spark plug here, it has to find a way to cool itself down to a decent temperature. It might still be 200 degrees or so depending on what the head temperature of the engine is when it's running. So it has to transfer the heat. Now the spark plug designers have designed this thing so the heat has a certain distance or the way they engineered it for the heat to get to that head to be cooled off to that certain temperature. Now the heat has to travel up here and then through the shell and then like I say the head absorbs that heat. Now, what the engineers have done is they've basically engineered this so it would be like a timing mechanism. A hotter plug generally would take a longer path before th that heat got um, absorbed by the engine cylinder head. Whereas a colder plug, it would probably have a shorter distance to go through and make contact. See, these threads are in contact and they're screwed in tight against the cylinder head. As, as was the taper on this design of plug or if you have the washer type of plug. All of that comes into play in transferring heat to the cylinder head. So as you can see with this cutaway, it's a fairly long one. Okay, And this is just the, uh, the actual, oh, what could you say, the mechanics of how it works, the heat transfer. So Basically that's what I'm going to do with this part in the explanation of how the heat range works. So basically when you hear a spark plug, whether it's a hot plug or a colder plug, hotter plug, it's all, it's all about the heat transfer rate. A hotter plug will lose its heat slower so it will retain more heat, whereas a colder plug will get rid of its heat faster and it will, it will run colder. So the best um, well, I think about it, the best thing that I can advise you of, if you've got a, an, a, an engine in a car, original engine, and um, it's, there's no, no modifications made, like uh, even exhaust headers will, will change it somewhat too. Any, if, if the vehicle is totally stock, I would fully recommend staying with the, uh, the spark plugs that were supplied with that engine, no matter what manufacturer it was. Because all of the, uh, the major uh, spark plug manufacturers make excellent products. I've run uh, quite a few different ones, and uh, and I can sure tell you that these these guys uh, they know what they're doing. So um, with that all said, you know what a hot the basics of a hot and cold running plug is. I'll show you some designations on some actual spark plugs now. So just bear with me. I have to uh, move this out of the way. Put the drawing into archives, and we'll bring out some samples. And I have to probably zoom in a bit more to show you these numbers. You only see a partial spark plug by the time I zoom this thing in a little bit. I just want to get the uh, be able to show you these numbers. Now I'll do one one set at a time. I'll start with the champions. These are the ones I'm most familiar with. Um, you can see there. There's all kinds of uh, letters and numbers on there. Now with the heat range on a champion spark plug, they're relatively easy to uh, to read. And I can actually tell you about these two different heat ranges that are here now. Um, you'll see a 12 there and um, a 14. Okay, with this style and uh, type of plug, the higher the number that you see in the plug will tell you that it's a hotter plug. So this basically is two steps hotter than a 12. Now the engine, it was a a 360 small block Dodge engine, mid 70s, and uh, these were the actual plugs, spark plugs that came installed in the engine from the factory. Uh, they may they may even change the designation. They put an R in front of it, probably means resistor, and then you might see a C on the end of it, which probably means copper electrode or something to that effect. But basically, this is uh, this is a newer one, a newer style. I couldn't get the uh, the straight N14Y, so they put an R in front of it and a C and improved it somewhat. Same plug basically, only an improvement, different heat ranges. Now with this thing, the vehicle was in storage for uh, a number of years with the 12s in it. And it was getting kind of fouled here uh, with the rich running and the choke and everything. So then uh, 
I decided to try even just in a few cylinders. I went up to the 14 and boy it sure made a difference. It was burning off the deposits but I never did get a chance to run the car on the uh, on the street to see what it would do but I imagine it would probably be too hot. So if you're dealing with a, a stock engine stay with the manufacturer's suggested plug. Um, you can get a different manufacturer's plug and they'll do a cross reference for you and everything but um, some people even have their own favorite brand of plug. By all means, it's your money. You can do as you like, but my recommendation is to stick with the actual plug manufacturer and heat range that came with that vehicle, unless you've done modifications uh, with, the, uh, with the, the fuel supply system, whether you're carbureted or you're fuel injected. Or... The thing is to read these plugs and make sure they're not melting, or if they are loading up on you and running too rich, chances are that might even be a fuel problem rather than a spark plug plug problem. Okay so those are the uh, the champions there and say you go up two numbers in heat range and it makes a world of difference and I can tell you just from an, an engine idling in the garage with the door open there was a big big jump just with two number changes. Okay so now I'll, uh, I'll mention the, uh, the NGKs now. I used to uh, run these in a, a 250cc uh, motorcycle two-stroke uh, yeah, it was a two-stroke uh, engine. Two-stroke cycle is the proper name. Now, um, with these, these are the NGK ones. Very good plugs. I've actually run these uh, with the uh, the different style that I showed you in another spark plug video that I made where it had the, the side electrodes. There's two or three of them uh, on the firing end, whereas most of the regular cars only have one side electrode on the end. Um, excellent plugs. Um, You'll see their, their numbers, I got an 8 and a 10 in the designation there. Okay, so but with the NGK and uh, might be a couple other brands there, they, they um, at least as far as these ones were concerned, they're a few years old, mind you. I don't know, they may have changed their designation as of late, but their numbers go, go the opposite direction. Okay, so the smaller the number on an NGK plug, the hotter the uh, plug will be and the higher the number the colder the plug will be. Now remember those champions um, that I just showed you the higher the number in indicates a, a hotter heat range whereas the NGK the smaller the number you go on here the hotter the heat range. Okay so make sure that you always uh, if you're going to do any you know switching of brands or whatever make sure that you get an exact accurate crossover from the parts guy. I would even recommend that I would stay with the actual factory ones if you can get them. I can't stress that enough. Then we'll get on to our AC Delcos. Um, the one on the left is from a, a mid-90s General Motors minivan with a V6 in it, 4.3 liter. The one on the right was out of a 350 Chevy van, late 70s. And a V8 cylinder, uh, 8 cylinder rather. Okay, with these, they're, they're much like the Champion, only they're, they're a little bit more uh, to think about. The best thing I could come up with, just from a ballpark kind of a thing, was take the second number, like you'll see a 43 there and a 45. Now these are like the champions. The bigger the number, the hotter the heat range. The smaller the number, the colder the heat range. Okay, so there's a 43, there's a 45. Although they're different um, for different engines, uh, what I came up with is if you take the second numeral, like the 3 in this case and the 5 on this one, and I think if you multiply it by 3, don't quote me on this, you can check it yourself and use cross references, chart, charts and stuff like that and the internet should have all kinds of information. Just make sure you get the exact same ones that were in your engine unless you're doing modifications and you have to adjust accordingly. Okay, so I multiplied the 3, uh, three by uh, 5 was it and it came up with a 15. Uh, was it 5? No, it's 15, let's see. It's 9 rather. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 5 is 15 if you're going to compare it to say a champion plug. That's the closest I came to ever figuring these things out but like I say always go with the manufacturer's recommendation. Um, try to stick to the factory installed plugs especially like I say I can't repeat enough if you have a vehicle that hasn't been modified for you know compression, exhaust, whatever. If it's totally bone stock I, I highly recommend going with the actual factory plugs as well as uh, the same same uh, number and heat range. Uh, that way you know that you're uh, not going to cause any damage by making a mistake and putting the wrong ones in. 
Um, that pretty much does it for the heat range, but I will mention this uh, before I go is always make sure that even though you, you think you got the right crossover, the right plug, always check the length of the uh, spark plug threads. Um, there's, uh, there's some engines that need a longer threaded portion sticking into the engine and some need a shorter one. Now you won't damage it by putting a shorter threaded portion in a longer threaded um, cylinder head, but if you go and put a longer threaded spark plug into a shorter threaded cylinder head, you can have pistons and maybe valve problems here. You'll destroy not only the plug and parts falling into it, but you can ruin your engine. So just one final reminder is to always make sure that you, you put them side by side. Like say, if you were going to get a, a new plug, especially if it's a crossover one from a different manufacturer or a different style, there's the difference there. Just uh, I know one's got a washer, one's a taper seat, but see I'll move it up here where you can actually see it got to remember I was zoomed in there but uh, if this say they were both uh, the washer type or both the taper seat type as you can see if this you put a long threaded one where it required a length like that you're gonna do some uh, engine damage when that piston and the valve start moving and banging into that so always always check your thread lengths visually put the the new and old plug side by side and make sure they're the same length okay to save you quite a few dollars in engine damage just by mentioning that in case somebody makes a mistake along the way. So I uh, hope you enjoyed what I had to tell you today, a little bit about heat ranges and uh, thread lengths if you will. So uh, that's it folks for today. Take care, have a nice day and uh, bye for now.